What's going on, wrestling fans? Welcome to the Tapped In Indie Wrestling Podcast, part of the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast Network. I'm Heath Mulligan, joined by the man who, who had a very long weekend. Lots of wrestling to watch. Nick McDaniel. Nick, how are you this morning? Uh, dude, you're right. I'm doing really, I'm dragging this morning. It's a, uh... If in case you're wondering, folks, we are recording on Memorial Day, um, you know, so we want to take a minute and, you know, pay honor to those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, obviously. Um, yeah. But we're recording, but we had a long weekend and um, two pay, two PLE slash pay-per-views, uh, tons of wrestling, um, obviously preparing for both shows, not just one. Yeah. Uh, so compound it in and uh, we'll discuss a little bit about the indie scene this past weekend and all that kind of stuff as we head into it. But yeah, tired yes. is the word. I watched a lot of wrestling this weekend, and spoiler alert, I'll be filling in on the national show, so excited excited to... Y'all get a double dose of Heath and Nick this week, so make sure you uh, prepare yourselves emotionally for that. Hey, one thing you need to do, fans, to prepare yourself for any uh, any wrestling is you got to go, you got to subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com slash tapped out pod. You never know what's going to be released also if you want to be on top of things you got to go over to youtube hit the subscribe button like our videos and hit the bell you're going to get the notifications whenever new content is released and maybe i say it every week maybe video is not your thing maybe you're like driving down the road listening to great podcasts we're wherever you can find audio podcasts apple Podcasts, spotify iheart radio and we are just appreciative of all your support, uh, especially when we release unique, special content. I want to thank everybody who has watched or listened to the Heat's Hot Take with Dr. Amber James, the review of the last match, uh, which I've been calling it a wrestling musical, but it's actually a pro wrestling, a, a rock and roll pro wrestling experience. I cannot say enough about how great that show was and, if you haven't listened to that review, I would encourage you to listen to the review. The album is on Apple Music. I'm sure it's other places. And I want to, you know, again, thank publicly Dr. Amber James. Uh, she's kind of been blown away by, we got how many views? So uh, we're grateful. Grateful for all of that. Listen, and uh, we, we're not going to name drop. It's not something I'm a big fan of, obviously. But um, look, some pretty big names. You know, we I know that have listened to this, so that I was, you know, they I've got reached out to to say, hey, can we get a copy of this early? So I kind of created a Google Drive and shared this with some of the powers that be, um, some people that are in the show. I mean, I'll leave it at that, right? That are, you know, and so I I I thought it was cool. I was like, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was blown away that I was like, yeah. okay, dude, this thing did really really well um, for the for the network and. Uh, so I want to say thank you to her for coming on as well and sharing that because uh, when I listened to it, it was and she pointed out things that I never would have. Right. Obviously, that, I think that's the beauty of it is that there were people that uh, were in that field that could appreciate that podcast that would probably never listen to anything else we ever did for that matter. Right. So right, and uh, it 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 became something. It, uh, it was just a great conversation and uh, very grateful for Dr. Amber James. And what's really cool is she, we got done and we had done a couple of podcasts together for us. She's like, we should totally do a podcast together, Mike. I get that a lot. So who knows? There might be another podcast <laughs> coming. Uh, so fans, uh, it is Memorial Day weekend. There weren't as many shows, but we're going to jump right into this week's Indie Rewind and look at some of the shows that did take place across the region uh, starting all the way back a week ago, where you headed out to wrestling at Southern, talk a little bit about that Monday night show. Uh, yeah, so I briefly discussed it, like very briefly on the national show, because I knew we were going to be so far wrapped around as far as the time and the date. Um, so I, I, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's really cool to see these kids uh, because look, it's a lot of Nightmare Factory talents, uh, you know, at these wrestling at Southern shows. But guys getting an opportunity to develop, to work on some things. And uh, we've talked about this, about promotions that are in, like, there's certain tiers of promotion. And I'm not saying they're high or low. That's not what I'm saying. But this is a great opportunity for these guys to try things. Mm. Like, hey, um, you know, look, uh, pull the curtain back a little bit. 
so Monday is like nightmare training, like in ring day or whatever. Uh, or they are, if they're out doing these shows on Monday, it's kind of in ring day, but they get to have fans there. I will tell something. It's in ring at your training school is great. Obviously, the coaches are there giving you the feedback. But sometimes I feel like the best places – no, let me back up. Not sometimes. All the time, I feel like the best places to especially try character work, gimmick work, call it what you want, is in front of people. I don't care if it's 50, 60, you know, 200, whatever. There's a level of it. Like, I can't try this at the tippy top. I, I got to try this, you know, in a, in a, in a training friendly confines. And Wrestling mm-hmm. Southern is 100% that. I saw guys doing some things that that's not like not their normal. And I was like, oh, he's, he's experimenting a little bit. He's trying something to see how the crowd reacts. And, uh, dude, by the way, the standout of that show, um, as far as – there's two. There were two to me, by the way. Um, Brady Booker, like, in his – once he hits his bro mode, is what I called it. I know that's probably not what he calls it. But, like, it was just total hysterically funny. I was like, okay, mm. I like this. I like this version. This is funny. Um, and then – well, I kind of say there were two, but there were three in a, in a sense of the main event. Uh, I want to just, I don't even know if I've shared this with you yet. Tip my cap to Adrian Warden. The, the, the Warden, look, I get it. He's a bad guy. I understand all that. He defended his title in a match with a guy who's super green. Super green. And, I mean, we're talking, I think, less than 20 matches. Hmm. And the match was spectacular. I thought they did a really good job. That goes to show you not only is Adrian Ward the Warden coachable, he's able to be a coach. Yes. And those are two different things. And I so I want to tip my cap to him for sure. Absolutely for sure. One of the most fascinating movies, documentaries I've ever seen was after Seinfeld ended. They they follow Jerry Seinfeld as he's coming up with new material. It's called Comedian. It was very fascinating because you saw Jerry Seinfeld trying out stuff in all these comedy clubs, bombing. Yeah, Stuff didn't work. And what people don't realize, before you see a Bill Burr or a Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle on the big stage doing their special, all of that material has been worked out five minutes, 10 minutes at a time at all of these local comedy clubs. And it's the same with wrestling. Mm -hmm. You, before you get to WWE or AEW, you have got to hone who you are. You've got to know who you are and shows like the one you're describing. That is the opportunity to do that. And sometimes it's not going to work. And you got to be okay with that. You got to you got to have enough confidence in yourself to bomb, and know nope. it's just one night. Hundred percent, I agree. Um, we did not. It was a graduation weekend, so I had a graduation party Friday night. My son graduated Saturday. I got to know wrestling, uh, but we wanted to let everybody know. Momo Khan had a lot of wrestling hosted by Outlandish Zicky Dice. I also want to send out to Bob Keller who had his ring crew there and had him set up and got the cage set up. You were telling me about some of the matches and Zicky, we need to know where can we go watch this? Um, Cause there were some like one of a kind or one time only matches. Uh, so the fans at Momocom got, I think six great shows over the weekend. And I think the match you're talking about, I, we saw a, I saw one picture specifically, and I like to the point I had to comment. I commented on social media about it. Cruel versus Big Ben Bishop. Like I get it. Like Big Ben Bishop, like he's he's kind of newer on the Georgia scene for a lot of people. A lot of people haven't seen. Well, like we had the pleasure that Disruptor brought him in, and that's where I've seen him. Uh, and so, and then I've I was so impressed by him at Disruptor. That we followed him on social media. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's hysterical follow, by the way. You yes. get, you big trouble, Ben. You know, go find him on social media. He's hysterical. Um, 
but then so now I'm like this we're going to discuss him a little bit down the road. Yeah, later in this episode. But when I saw the image of him versus Cruel, that match alone, I'm like, and here's the thing. Like, I get it. Everybody's like, hey, you should have been there. Momocon, it was six. Okay, first of all, I'm a comic book collector. I'm not, Momocon is not a comic convention. People can try to tell me that it is. It is not. Um, just really isn't my environment to hang out at all day. Not knocking in anything. I know a lot of people were there. We had a lot of friends that were there, obviously. Yes. And a lot yes. of the talents that were there. Um, but I don't ask people to come to comic con- conventions if they're, you know, not comic con- So anyway. But I want to see that. I want to see Ben Bishop versus Cruel. I 100% want to see that, you know, so. This might be your one opportunity this year, fans, to see someone who might be taller than Cruel. Which is not does not happen very often. Yeah. Uh, Deep South uh, ran over the weekend. Renegade, Renegade, uh, Renegade, Independent Pro. Easy, Easy for me say. to say in Georgia. Carolinas were hopping to AML. Saw their pictures from their show in Moxville uh, yesterday, uh, featuring uh, Elias versus Billy Brash. I don't know if you saw the picture of the guitar outline on Billy Brash's back. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, Palmetto Championship Wrestling Saturday. Full house again in Camden. They are firing on all cylinders. Chester. Chester APW in South Carolina. They had a full house. Chester to me, and and you got it. I mean, it'd be a haul for you. Chester is one of those places, very small, intimate venue, but one of those places you got to watch a show there because it is so small, it is so tight. They can pack when they pack a hundred to one hundred and twenty people in there. It it's almost claustrophobic, but there's there's something special about that environment. And uh, William Roberts always does a great job, puts on great shows, and and they keep bringing in some great talents. The Heat Seekers won uh, the inaugural tag team champions for Amer- ta- tag team champions for American Wrestling League. So again, lots going on, uh, which leads us to. Segment number two, and that is making the drive. So what is coming up this weekend, and where can you see great talent around the region? Saturday, uh, Classic City Wrestling is going to be in Macon, Georgia, at the Capitol Theater. Uh, They've already announced a couple of matches. Uh, Owen Knight versus Rico Gonzalez for the uh, heavyweight title. Uh, Owen Knight looking to add some gold to his collection. Listen, I'm obviously a massive Owen Knight fan, uh, but Rico has come on as of late. He's kind of – he's hitting a lot of places, uh, I will say. I think for the longest time, Owen Knight was one of those guys that, you know, the kind of the saying around Georgia was don't sleep on Owen Knight. Mm-hmm. And I think we've officially passed that point to where now he's, you know, he's a, he's a top guy in a lot of places and he's getting that recognition. So uh, kudos for Owen Knight for being persistent enough to hang through there. Um, but Rico Gonzalez is going to be a, a real tough challenger, to say the least. But, um, look, it's it's not a bad card, by the way. I've actually got the card. I've okay. actually got the full card. Um, Nazism, who is just everywhere in Georgia. Yeah. Um, you know, and look, this hoochie daddy gimmick, that he's, he's this heel <laughs> gimmick that he's embracing. Um, very, very entertaining. Um, he's going to be taking on Teriyaki. Who I'm a big fan of young kids got a lot of potential. Um, if you haven't booked him, book him. I really like the kid. Uh, Nikki Heat versus Rose Gold. Dominic Stuckey and Duncan Mitchell are taking on the North Side Heroes. And of course, the one, the other one we had listed that we knew about, Buff and Fluff Connection versus Exotic Youth. That that just screams like there's your that's that's why we had the money matches. Owen Knight and Rico Gonzalez, Buff and Fluff versus Exotic Youth. Yeah, they faced off um, in IWE. This will be a little different configuration because you got Pepper Bottom in there instead of Bryce Cannon, but still, uh, Classic City. Going to need to see some video of that. Yep. Uh, the big one on Saturday, Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. Again, this partnership, merger, whatever you want to call it, they're launching in Jefferson, Georgia. There, I believe, at the Ag Center. Mm-hmm. Uh QT Marshall, Billy Gunn, the infantry. Who who knows who else is going to be there? 
And the question we keep asking is, is this new, is this just going to be a complete game changer for Georgia? I, I think it's turnbuckle championship wrestling has the opportunity to push the bar even farther. So how do I politically say this? <laughs> you are either going to have to get better or the gap is potentially going to widen between the haves and the have nots. Uh, because you mentioned the names. Um, they have turnbuckle has resources at its disposal that a lot of promotions don't have. If you're a promotion that's building your thing on, Hey, we're bringing in name talents there, this is going to be a difficult competitor for you to have. Mm -hmm. um, we The schedule's out there. Give them a follow on social media, Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. A lot of their summer dates are already out there where they're going to be. Um, just for the record, putting it out there now, this is like 15, 20 minutes from my house. I assure you Saturday this will be the show that I'm at. Uh, mm -hmm. I will be going to check this out. I think it's uh, – just from the sake of, like I said, we I want to see how this looks, how it plays out. What do we, what do we see? Mm -hmm. I think presentation wise, I'm eager to see. Do we get closer to what we saw when we went to Turnbuckles taping and you know that down in McDonough? Um, I don't know. I, I, there's there's like that's it. The, why am I like? Here's the thing. Why is Nick going to Turnbuckle? There are so many questions that I, that that I need to see the answers of in person. Um, I need so I look if you're in this area. The great thing is the Saturday show for Classics in Macon. This one's in Jefferson. Dude, they're hours apart. We're not asking you to split an audience at my hour. If you're in that eighty five nine eighty five slash Northeast Georgia bubble, I'm pushing you to that corner. Go check out Turnbuckle. Uh, because you're going to see AEW, Ring of Honor, talents on the show, and you're going to see Nightmare Factory champions. Uh, I think Angelica Risk is uh, on this card defending that title. Um, you're going to see guys like the Warden, who we just talked about a minute ago. They're going to be on it. So I, I've got a little maybe behind the paywall conversation about the differences. Like I've kind of gotten a little bit of an explanation of this whole deal, how it works. Um but yeah, turnbuckle and to answer your question is yeah, it's a game changer. I think potentially, like if you are going to try to keep up, this might be one of those promotions that even I think even the top promotions are going to have to push themselves to keep up with it. Here's one of the things that sets turnbuckle apart is they are not going to play nice. They're not. They're not looking. They're not really looking to work with other promotions. And if you're a talent and you're working for maybe the big four and Turnbuckle comes calling and says, hey, we, we got a date, you you got to look at And I've, I've talked about this for years. If you are a wrestler who is – and you're working for a promotion, what are their connections? Who can they – talk to on your behalf when you're not there. And it is, it's very clear turnbuckle from day one is going to be one of those promotions. We said we weren't going to, and I'm not like, I'm not addressing this specifically. If you, so I'm going to come around a little bit. If you like, hey, how do I get out of Georgia? Being a wrestler in Georgia is not bad. But if your mission is, I need to get out of Georgia, I want to become a national, I want to get signed, I want to where they – there's a creation coming that I would point to you and say, if you want to try to get out of Georgia and you want to go – there are other routes. There are other paths. We're not saying there aren't. This one's screaming one of like, this is a way to potentially get seen and move on. Stop banging your head against the wall over here and look at a door that's been created over here and maybe it's time. Like what you just said, sometimes those decisions have to be made. Mm -hmm. I can go I can go work for this guy and I can – by the way, I don't even know these numbers. I'm making some numbers up. Mm -hmm. um, you can go over here and I can wrestle and I can make $100 for this guy that I work for all the time. Or 
I can go work for these guys and I might make fifty seventy five. But QT, Billy Gunn, the infantry, you know, and rattle off any other guy that might show it. Because when when I went to McDonough, there were a lot more people there from AEW Ring of Honor than even those names. Here's, they see you. Here's the thing maybe we haven't thought about, Nick, with Turnbuckle. The way that you get on the Turnbuckle show may be you have to train at the Nightmare Factory. And they Turnbuckle may not be operating where they're like, hey, send us your match stuff. We'd love to. They may be going in. We've got our roster. We've got our people. We don't. We're not looking to add yeah. outsiders. Yeah. And then you got a decision. How you, serious you, am I? Right. Or, I have, here's the or. I was trying to get <laughs> Or. You may need to go work a couple of wrestling at Southern shows to work your way up to food chain. Right. Right. Just saying. Just saying. I have I have said this to wrestlers. There are times where you would be better off turning down a payday for, to put it nicely, a smaller show to go set up the ring for free at another show where mm -hmm. you can rub elbows, make some connections, network, look, watch, work hard, prove yourself. Uh, I, I definitely think... Wrestling's yeah. a complicated business, isn't it? Sometimes it's like the best business decision is to take less money. Sometimes yes. it's a business by, by the way, this guy struggles with that more than anybody. I would a lot of times like, no, go get your money. And then I'm like, well, no, is that the best decision? Like I have to hindsight question myself, was that the right decision to do? That's why I think, oh man, we, whew, this is great behind the paywall stuff that you folks are getting for free this week. That's why if you've got a good Monday, Friday job that you're, you can pay your bills, you can pay your rent and anything from wrestling is extra, then you don't have to take a booking for money. You can take a booking for movement. Correct. And that's, there's a, it is all about mindset. And you and I talk to a lot of people in wrestling and we can normally tell in a five minute conversation or less, if that person has the mindset to really go somewhere and that's not putting anybody down. That's just a fact. And that's in every walk of life. That's in every, you can talk to a kid, you know, you can talk to a sophomore in high school who's a football player and you can tell whether they're going to play college football or not uh, um anyway whoa we just we're chasing yeah. the rabbits today uh that's just saturday folks so yeah. maybe hey i'm free saturday night but well, i'm free for saturday night now maybe i can make it down there turnbuckle then sunday sunday's one i'm excited to, to hear about iwe taking north carolina by storm they're going to be there at the elevation wrestling uh complex uh, listen to some of these matches. It's basically what it's like. Someone said this on Patreon, IWE talents versus Carolina talents. You got Skrilla taking on D'Angelo white. Mike defends the IWE heavyweight title against James Johnson. Those two guys are no strangers to each other. They've crossed paths before. And then exotic youth taking on Amish country. These are all going to be really, really good matches and matches you're not going to see anywhere else. And for somebody like Skrilla, Skrilla's a Georgia wrestler of the year. Voted by his peers. D'Angelo, one of the top up-and-coming talents in the Carolinas. That's going to be a proving ground match for both of them, I think. Yeah. And... Um, so IWE, good luck to them. They're gonna again. That's in Lexington, North Carolina. Pick up some barbecue and then go to wrestling there uh, Sunday, Sunday night. Uh, as you know, fans, summer's officially begun. Memorial Day marks the official.
beginning of summer. And we wanted to ask the question, as we head into the summer, which people have the most to lose and who has the most to gain this summer? So I want to throw out some thoughts here, Nick. The first one I want to throw out is Anarchy Wrestling. Here's my question. What's the attendance number, business number that hardcore hell has to hit to show that anarchy can be viable at the Royston Dome? What are your thoughts on that? Can I rephrase the question a little bit? Yes. Because here's kind of the why. I think there's going to be acceptable and viable are two different things. Yeah. Um, and I think that really matters, and I'll explain what I say. Um, I agree, yep. Viable is just financially, you know, hey, we, we can run here. We're going to be good. Um, I don't think the powers that be behind anarchy would be happy with viable for the for this return, this hardcore hell. Um, I don't know what the number is. I Listen, um, can I do some math in my head and say <laughs> what's viable? Um, okay, well, their roster's X making up some numbers if they draw here's the thing and again because it's viable versus viable is if they, they i i think me personally um just for my viability question a hundred mm. and i say that based on if, if every ticket was 10 bucks it's about buck, blah, 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 insert you know i'm doing some rough numbers there for obvious reasons acceptable What's the big do you and I think I know, but I'm trying to I'm rambling through my head here. What's the biggest number the Royston Dome we've ever seen? Is it that show that they did where they cross promoted? It was one was it one fifty, one seventy five, something like that? It was it was under two hundred. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if it was one fifty, one seventy five. So here's my thing. Does that have to be the acceptable number? Like for a returning anarchy hardcore hell show. Does it need to be at least in that ballpark to go, hey, we're we're happy with this number? And I think maybe that's – are they happy with that number? Is, is that – obviously there are some buildings your attendance is capped. I think sure. – I think an old gym like that, Royston Dome, they might could go to two, three – Easily 200, maybe 300, maybe even 400. I don't know, depending on how many chairs they have. Anarchy has to go in with the mindset of we're moving the needle. We're setting a new, whatever the attendance record is before, we're going for 225, we're going to 250. That's got to be, uh, that's got to be their mindset. I think 250, like 300, they're thrilled. Yes. Uh, I think Happy's 150, 175, 200 range. Um, like I said, acceptable viability. I mean, you got to be, I, I think, 100. Um, and look, and look, I could be totally wrong because, look, you want me full, me throwing out how I get these numbers? I'll explain it to you. I'm basing it on, hey, this is what my talent payroll looks like and this, that, and the other, and Blah blah blah, and I know some people are going to throw in rent, some things. I'm a couple things that I know that I'm kind of like, all right, I think it's a hundred, right? But I just don't know that the, it's hundred or less than a hundred. I, I don't know that anybody's happy with that, right? So I, right now I'm looking at the ticket page for front row, fifteen dollars. They have 29 front row seats remaining. Second and third row, which is the rest of the floor seating, they have 94 remaining. They haven't put a limit on the general admission bleacher seating. So that's 122 seats just ringside. Um, so I, who, who knows how many they're even trying to sell. If that's 100, I mean, they might be trying to sell 150 just on the floor, which that's ambitious, and I like it. Um, so we'll see, man, if they can sell, if they, they may be good if they just sell out that ringside portion, if that, if that's 150, they may be good to go. 
Yeah, I, I like I said that's it's going to be. I'm excited to see. I really am. I, I yes. it's that get the summer's hot, and you know we're we're kicking off. I mean, we talked about it. I mean, we're going to talk about it here in a minute, a little bit. What we I consider the kickoff in indies, you know, wrestling in Georgia, the summer starts. But yes, yes. Um, here's another one. IWE. They've announced July 13th the Beckplex in North Augusta, South Carolina. This is a really big event. I'm also hearing they're going to maybe run it more than one time this year. One time this year. Um, if IWE does a huge number for this show, like tops what they've been doing at the uh, American Legion event, let's say they top 600. They've been, you know, between 550, 600 at the American. Let's say they top 600, 700 at the Beckplex. Does that just erase all the doubts, all the doubters, and just say, we are a major player, we are here to stay, get on board because we're not slowing down for anybody? I think it's yes because you're piggybacking on the fact that now they're also running those Carolina shows, uh, North Carolina shows specifically, because this, this is a Carolina show. It's technically mm-hmm. South Carolina. Um, if, they can mo- if they can maintain the momentum, Mm-hmm. running the, 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 the North Carolina show, running this facility, and then, again, being the number matters. Um, and then continue to the momentum they have in their built, the, the, uh, the Legion in uh, Georgia. You'd be hard-pressed to say, but here's the thing, you'd be hard-pressed to say they are not just firing on all cylinders and they're crushing it. By the way, sidebar, we would never, ever hear the end of it from James Caleb Kitchens if they do. Um, that's just, I've got a feeling. Let's just go. i got a feeling that we'd never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever hear the end of it if he took that company and they're running the Carolinas and they're running this building and they're selling out 600. Um, <laughs> is it an ego? If, it's, if, it's, if he's right, is it an ego? Yes, it is. Um, but here's the other thing. When you take risk, mm-hmm. there's both sides of that coin. Yes. So, it, on one hand, look, I think there's a lot to be said for they're willing to take these risks. Yes. And they're willing to do these things. Um, because it, you have to embrace, and I say this because uh, there's a, somebody that I listen to, motivational speaker, call it what you want, and one of the things he says, you have to embrace the possibility of failure. Mm-hmm. When you when you try new things and you're the only, you can't, nothing is safe that's a big win. There is no such thing as a big win that's safe. Um, I don't know if that's true 100%, but that's that's what they say. And who they are, I don't know. But that's what they say. So there is when you talk about the opportunity to lose and gain, they might be one of the biggest players in this category, because if if the Carolina thing doesn't work, and the the Beckplex isn't a big success, then you know, hey, are you just like, what what do you follow that up with? That we just we pack up and we move back to it because they look, they do super successful. You can't take anything away from them in the American Legion in Augusta. It's just like, Hey, but was it just too ambitious to go out here and do this? The mm-hmm. thing is time will tell. They may get the last laugh in it all. If it works out for everybody, for them. Right. I, I, I applaud 100% applaud what they're doing. They are, they're taking risk. They're thinking outside the box the risk in going to the Beckplex is if, you, and I have challenged them. I've challenged them publicly and behind the paywall. Hey, you've maxed out. You've sold out your building. What are you going to do? You know, to take that next step to get to another level. The problem is if you go to a bigger venue and you draw less, let's say they draw 390. At the Beckplex, when they've they've consistently been over four hundred at the American Legion, mm-hmm. you don't call that a failure. Like you ran a big building, but you you just reevaluate some things. Listen, 
any show that draws 390 people, not a failure, unless you're like at, you know, uh, the Superdome or something like that. Um, so anyway, that it's going to be exciting to see what they do. Here's someone more of an individual wrestler, Bryce Cannon. We, he posted that rehab video the other day. He's in the early stages of his rehab. Could there be a moment in this process where he takes a gigantic step forward or has a setback in his rehab. This is a huge summer for him. This is a huge, when you're rehabbing an injury, a lot of it's physical, but a lot of it's mental. Hey, listen, do I 100% believe in Bryce Cannon's mental state of where he is and wanting to come back better than ever? 100%. And I'm, am I pulling for him? 100%. But there's a possibility he comes to a crossroads, and it, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Nobody should be surprised by what I'm about to say about my thoughts on Bryce Cannon. <laughs> I have zero, zero percent thought that mentally he doesn't have everything. I think that kid is probably more determined and more disciplined than anybody we know to push through this. I always say sometimes, though, um, it, like trying to say I can make it back in seven months or nine months, because he, by the way, he hasn't given a number. I'm literally just saying this out loud. Mm -hmm. And if you, in your brain, it's seven months you want to be back and it's nine is what it ends up being, it's typically, a lot of times, it's not the mental, it's just the physical, the, re the, the rehab of it. And it, it look, time... Time heals a lot of wounds with a lot of rehab and stuff like that. So I think that's the bigger thing of like I we physically me, that's where my questions are. Physically in the process, how does you know the body react? It's not mental. Like I have zero issues that I have any concerns whatsoever on his mental uh pushing through this. Um I think the world of that kid. Um, but I think he's also disciplined enough. He's I think he's gonna listen to the doctors, mm -hmm. do everything. Um I think there's a there's a partner he has beside that's kind of like, hey, knows well enough to say, shut up and listen to what the doctor's saying. Do what you can. Do what they tell you to do. I, my biggest thing is don't get caught up in chasing the rabbit. Let it be 100% and do it the right way. So when when he's back, and I'll say enough, when he's back, we get 100% Bryce Cannon back in the ring, and he's off to the races again. Yes, yes. So, like I said, we're we're both we're both Bryce Cannon guys, I think, um, whether we're allowed to be or not as a broadcast journalist. Uh, yeah. Platinum Championship Wrestling. I want to throw their name out there. They just moved to a new venue. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a little bigger venue. Are can they sustain some of the momentum they've had? Can they continue to grow? Continue to be a place for young guys to get opportunities. Uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. They're, we're seeing some of their videos more and more. I, I'm seeing their videos in my feed, watching some of those matches. Um, and so that's the thing. We, we're seeing, you know, Southern States is running a show in their building. So a lot of opportunities opening up uh, for Platinum Championship Wrestling. Yeah, they, they look, they have a lot of – It's we talked about – it's like the, you know, I'm not comparing the two promotions, but like wrestling at Southern, it's a place where a lot of guys get to go and kind of experiment a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I want to try this out. I want to try this. I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, where I can't, like, you know, over here in this promotion, I'm just this hated, you know, heel <laughs> that, they, what, hey, I could be a baby face at Platinum at PCW, you know. And so they get to kind of do that kind of stuff. And I think that's why. I love that promotion so much and what they do for, I think they do a lot. They offer a lot to those talents. Uh, so hopefully they're, you know, settled into their new home and they just crush the summer and they can be off to the races as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, I want to talk about Southern States pro the, the last two shows at monkey wrench brewing, a uh, brewing the the crowds have not been, Maybe what they wanted them to be. The, the show we went to, we thought the crowd was pretty good. The last two shows, crowd has been down a little bit. They've announced uh, this 16-man tournament that they're having. 
Um, they've announced a new venue. These are things we've seen before. And the question I have for Southern states is, can they push through to get to the other side? Because it's just a few years ago, they, they, they announced a new venue. They announced a new format. They announced season tickets. It didn't play out. Here's my thing with, with Southern states. I, they are as persistent as, Yes. <laughs> they do push through. They do. They push through pretty much any obstacle that's thrown at them. Um, I think it's because of the loyalty. Um, is there – let me ask the – I'm going to a- answer a question with a question. All right. Um, this, and this is, by the way, I think a huge testament to some of the talents – or not the talents, but the, the, the people involved with Southern States. Because, uh, you know, I've known it back through its incarnations of AWE. Um does anybody, and I mean anybody, build a loyalty from its talents as much as they do? Um, guys just love working for that promotion. And it's for a million reasons from Sunday, and I, you know, we could rattle them all off, but they just do. Mm-hmm. And they are it's a, it's funny. I always say there's a there's another promotion, Phoenix Wrestling Experience, right? Mm-hmm. I always jokingly before they came along was like that's what they should be called because every time <laughs> every time people say oh AWE so, you know so that that team is done they they they're right. they stick a fork in them they're done they're not they come back and I'm like so anybody when you talk about questioning like it's you know the question is do can they persist and get through this wall if you t- if I tell you there's one promotion that I'm like yeah they're going to push through any wall you put in front of them it's them. They're going to come out. They're 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 flexible enough, and they will, you know, they will move around things to get to where they need to be. And so I always say they're not going anywhere. Uh, and then finally, I would say any promotion that launched in the first half of the year, can you get through the summer lull? If you've launched your promotion, I think of Kraken, I think of the aforementioned Phoenix Championship Wrestling, other promotions. You start running a few shows. When you start running shows, you have this idea, you have this vision, you have these goals, you have this dream. And sometimes reality doesn't live up to what you had hoped for. And as a business person, worker, performer, man, woman, you have to decide, oh, man, this really isn't what I thought it would be. It's a, it a little bit harder. I'm not as successful. And you have to decide if you're really all in or not, if you're going to push. Same question for Southern, that we have for Southern States. So I'm interested to see whether it was a launching from the scratch or a relaunch. Can these? Are, are you really in this for the long call? Can you... Can you survive a, a show that tanks, a show that bombs, creatively and financially? It, Are you willing to pay the price? The success and failure in any business, for the most part, is can you adapt on the fly? Mm-hmm. Wrestling is like a huge, huge uh, example of that. Like, I, we thought we were going to be this. Here's an example I tell people all the time. We talk about this in promotions. Hey, we want to be the um, the in ring ra- you know in ring action promotion. You start running in your town, not realizing this crowd wants Southern wrestling. Right. All right, you better adapt and give them what they want, or they ain't gonna keep coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, wrestlers, hey, I'm working shows. This is my style. Okay, that's not what the crowd wants. Right. Yeah, adapt to your style from promotion to promotion. Um, just in general, like I said, I think, and I, those promotions that maybe aren't sitting where they wanted to be, maybe look at your, yourself in the mirror, your promotion, your talents, or whatever, and go, are we giving the audience what they want? Or are we trying to put on a show? Because, look, and, by the way, if you're content with, like, hey, I'm going to put on a show I want, I don't care if I lose money or not, all right, we'll go do that. But if you're mm-hmm. wanting to make money, and you, then you better care what your audience wants. 
Right. That's right. That's right. Um, again, lots of question marks, but that's a good thing. That's what keeps this interesting. One thing that promotions have to think about, we talk about it all the time. There is a influx. There are wrestlers everywhere. There are promotions everywhere. But putting on a wrestling show takes more than just wrestlers. And as wrestling grows in the region, and we're starting to see this, we're mm -hmm. starting to see a challenge with non-wrestling talent. Diana Michelle can't be everywhere at once. So you got promotions now looking for ring announcers. You got promotions looking for referees. You get grandpa can't be everywhere right. every weekend. Uh, you got com commentary. Uh, Brandon Benefield and Gerard Bonner can't be at every show right. every weekend. So, where are those talents going to come from? Who's training? I mean, I know there's places training referees. I don't know. Is there ring announcer training? Is there commentary training? What What are your thoughts on some of that? Uh, so I do know, look, I know there are referees and there's, you know, Nightmare Factory trains referees. There's lots of, and all that kind of stuff out there. I think it was funny. I made a joke about it a week or two ago when I said, hey, It'd be awesome if all the promotions could get together and kind of spread out across the month about when when people are running and all that kind of things. And sure, we are. We were. We. I was selfishly speaking of myself and like how many yeah. shows. I mean, I was looking. So I've created this new calendar. We're looking at shows, and I'm looking at a date, and I'm like, all right, we're eight shows or seven shows or six shows running on that same day. And I'm like, okay, well that that's terrible, right? I got to decide where I'm going to go. It's by the way, it's a great. Great problem for us to have. We're having to pick between six, seven shows, right? Mm. Here's your problem. If they're all peppered into the same region, they all need ring announcers. And like you said, Diana can't do them all. Carmen Childers, I mean, there's two. And then you're like, okay, add this person. You know, I need seven. Like, who are they? Um, so If you do, think about this. If you do six shows, the average show needs a minimum of two refs. So, okay, there's 12 refs. Look, we know other great referees out there. Are there 12? I don't know. I don't know about that. You might be stretching me thin there. Um, maybe you do. So, commentary, same thing. I know uh, Rob Weathers and Carmen do commentary. I know there's some other teams out there. I know, uh, I think Bobby Popham runs a team that goes out and does some shows. But, we kind of come back to the same thing, right? There's If there's six or seven shows, who's doing these shows? And it was funny. You brought up something that I really hadn't thought of a ton, but it's a great potential solution to this, which was? Oh, I, I mean, I, I was saying I would, I've ring announced before. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I meant like you were like, hey, if you're – I'll spoil it for you. I guess I'll give oh. it away. Go ahead, if you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah. If you're a wrestler, and uh, I think this is what you're talking about. Sorry. Uh, you are. You are. I, I watched the AEW pay-per-view last night, and here in the opening match is Mike Posey is the referee. I watched the PLE Saturday. I see uh, used to wrestle as Aja Pereira. And here's two people. On the big stage, who were smaller in stature, and at some point made the decision: if I want to get to the pinnacle of this industry, I got to change. Yeah, my dream may have been to be a wrestler. I got to pivot. And so I would say, if you, there are a lot, okay, how do I say this? And I want to be as nice and as kind as possible. Not all of us are blessed with the physical attributes and DNA to be world-class professional athletes, okay? And we, you and I, I, again, I'm trying to be, we meet people all the time who say, oh, yeah, I'm training as a wrestler. And we're kind of like, mm-hmm, all right. 
And here's the thing. Somewhere along the way, a trainer, somebody's like, hey, you know what? I admire your work ethic. I admire your heart. I admire your passion. There's nothing wrong with the, any of that. However, you have two left feet. You, you just don't have the genetics to be, to do what we need to do. What if, hey, get you a sport coat. Get you a tie. Let's hear you talk. You talk great. You talk very well. You might can be our ring announcer. Or, hey, you you can get around. We're going to get you a striped shirt. We're going to make you one of our referees. Or, hey, you've, you've trained a little bit. You understand the physical aspects of this. We're going to put you on commentary. And let me tell you, as someone who's done lots and lots of commentary, it is – uh, it's not as easy as you think it is. You, especially when you do commentary with somebody. Do you want me to tell you, I'm gonna, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm gonna let you go right no, back. You're, good. you're talking to a guy who does a podcast, multiple podcasts a week, who <laughs> refuse, by the way, who refuses to do commentary. Cause I listen to it enough to go. Yeah. That's not me, dude. I'm not doing that. Right. I, I love doing commentary. I love doing, I love getting thrown in. I've, I've gotten to shows and they're like, Hey, you're doing commentary with so-and-so. I love that challenge of saying, hey, are you doing the play-by-play? -play? Yeah, I'm going to do play-by-play. -play. I'm normally a play-by-play -play guy. So to be able to just say, hey, I'm going to follow you, and I'm just going to I'm just going to insert stuff. And um, can I also say this? I'll, I'll talk about this on the national show, but spoiler alert. I thought the commentary at the, show, at the shows I watched this weekend were great. I think Michael Cole and – Corey Graves, without a certain voice in their head, they were great. Holy cow. I thought Tony Schiavone, Excalibur, and then they rotated people. Nigel McGinnis, Taz. I thought it was great. and um, you, But it takes time. And so that's the thing is, is you got to try it out. But I think there's opportunity. Listen, if I were a wrestler training, I would see – there's a lot of spots to be filled in these other areas. And uh, like I said, I, I, I'm i always willing to jump in as a ring announcer or whatever. And and I'm not reffing. I refereed the training match one time and thought I was going to die. So that is not for me. But uh, I do like to talk. So just something to think about. As, we, as promotions grow, somebody's got to fill those spots. I think, listen, if, you, if you've been banging your head against the wall, and look, again, I'm not knocking anybody because um, they you know, who you're, you, you know who you are more than I'm referring to anybody in particular. If you're a talent who's been on, the, on, the, on these shows and you're like, hey, look, I mean, I'm, I've become the $25, you know, whatever guy, whatever. 50, is there anything wrong with being a $25, $50? Hundred, I, don't know what ref, I don't even know what refs make, to be honest with you. Mm. I mean, you know, and you're out there and you're getting, you know, and then you can try to work your way up and, like I said, get your training. And, like, I just think there's more than one way to get there. And I admire, like I said, Aja was one of the first ones that I remember going, all right. Like, they took her down there and clearly they saw something and they were like, mm -hmm. this is what we see you as. And, you know, and, oh, by the way, um, talk about living your dream. Like, yeah, you're not in there wrestling, but guess what? You're probably good at taking bumps when you have to take ref bumps, mm -hmm. um, those type of things. And then you could still see the world. You could still you could main event a WrestleMania. Yes. You could main event a Royal, whatever. Any pay, insert pay per view. You're just sure you're not the talent. I understand that, but if if the adaptability part we talked about earlier, there you go, dude. That's a that's a huge prime example of it. I'm not telling people to give up on their dreams, but sometimes you know you're like, hey, if this door opens. I would admire a talent who said, by the way, I know some people that do it the reverse. They're refs first, and then mm -hmm. they become talents. So keep that in mind. I'm just saying don't rule it out. But if you're trying to here, – here's a kicker, and I'll let it go with this. Man, I'm just having trouble getting booked on insert show's name. I'm, you know, I just They don't ever have a place for me. Have you asked them about, like, did you ever thought about getting trained as a referee and that's the way to get your foot in the door of the place? or a ring announcer, or a commentator, like you said, just get your foot in the door, man. If you're working, if you go there and you're a ref, and they use you show after show after show, 
you're creating your value and then saying, mm-hmm. Hey, um, look, I know I'm the ref guy, but what about, you know, can I get a shot? Like, give me a match. And they try you out and you, you impress them. They might be, maybe there's more to this guy. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's an opportunity to get an opportunity. I think, and I, I've said this to lots of young wrestlers. I have told them, you need to learn how to do it all. You need to, if you got to set up a ring by yourself, you need to know how to do that. You need to know how to set up a sound system. You need to know how to wrestle. You need to know how to ref. You need to know how to ring announce. You need to have ring announcer clothes. You need to have an outfit. If you get somewhere and you're just hanging out with your buddy, they're like, hey, we need a ring announcer. Boom, done. Uh, you need to be able to do every single aspect of a wrestling show because the more of those skills you learn, the more valuable you're going to be. I have shown up to shows where they're like, man, we, you know, ref called out. Imagine if you were a, a talent who showed up just to help set the ring up and you mm-hmm. had gear and ref gear in your bag. Yes. I could do that. I got gear in the car. Ref gear? Yeah. Awesome. You know what I mean? Like, so let's see what you got. And because then it might be, hey, we're going to use our one guy in six of the eight matches. We're going to give you two to try you out or whatever. Okay, man, make the most of that opportunity. That's all we can say. Make the most of that opportunity. And when we say ref gear, we mean black pants, black shoes, and a black and white striped ref shirt. Yeah. Unless we, they get, unless they have the blue, pole, like with the correct. Logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A but we're not real talking ref gear. Yeah. We're not talking khaki shorts. Yeah. We're not talking white sneakers. Uh, you know, let's be very, very, very yeah. clear on that. Now. Fans, we're at the middle of the year, and my son, he just got his high school yearbook, and I remember when I was in high school, we had the senior superlatives, and we thought here at the begin- at the middle of the year, we thought it would be fun to look at some superlatives, you know, not the typical wrestler of the year, tag team of the year, pro- but we thought it'd be nice to look at it, some different categories and to talk about uh, who we thought fit the bill on these categories. Here we go. Most likely to get signed by a major promotion. You and I had some thoughts. You had one of you of somebody you thought might could get signed by WWE. Yeah, so we thought it would be fair to split it. You picked somebody for AEW. I picked somebody from WWE. My choice and it's kind of going to surprise a lot of people. Big Ben Bishop. Um, the reasons, I can give you three of them. Size, size, size. Dude's massive. And I, that's alone, I think he's got, and remember we said this at, I think I, when I first time I saw him at Disruptor, dude's got an opportunity to get signed just because of his the physical gifts that God has given him. Mm-hmm. Like that and that alone is enough reason for somebody who's going to go, Hey, maybe we should give him a look and see what he what we got. We can teach him everything else, but remember though, he's seven foot tall and you can't teach that. Well, there you go, folks. That that's why I think he's got the opportunity to be that guy. Now he's he's one he's not gonna be able to be a referee. They're not gonna no. they don't no. hire seven <laughs> foot referees. No. Uh the young man that I thought of that I think there's a place for him in AEW because of his he's age pretty young his look, and his unquestionable talent, and his style is Sean Legacy. Uh, when I watch AEW and I see the the athleticism, the creative freedom, I see Sean Legacy as someone who could definitely uh, fit in there. I'm not saying he couldn't work for WWE. It's just some, I'm glad we have two promotions that are different now. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think Sean Legacy – uh, and I think every single, whatever you want to call us, pundits across the board in Georgia, we are all very high on Sean Legacy. Yeah, uh, He's just an otherworldly talent, and you can see it. And then you, you see it when you see him, and then when you see him wrestle, uh, you see it even more. And my, Hold on, my side note on this, and I'll make it quick. The thing that flipped me even more so for him is the character work he's doing with Cody Fluffman right now. I yes. told you that. The second I saw the character work, I'm like, I'm all in now. 
that's kind of what happened with Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia came in as a stoic, serious wrestler, but what's gotten him over in AEW is dancing. And uh, I've seen Sean Legacy's dance moves, and he's he's pretty good. Yeah. Here's another one. Most likely to steal a show. I really did not have to. I thought about this one for about 10 seconds. And then I thought about uh, a guy who just moves at a different speed. And that's Vari Morales. When Vari is in the ring, he's going to match whoever he's in there with. But his ability to go in there and have a banger with with anyone from Slim J uh, to to any of the people he wrestles, um, he he just is a phenomenal talent. And I think it's because of the the package too that it's. Mm. He just stands out so much from everybody else on the card. And like you said, when he gets to going, it's just just off the charts fast. And it's like, yeah, these and the stuff he's willing to do. There's not, there's not just the what you can do. It's what you're willing to do. Sometimes right. that is also going to set you apart. And I think that's why Vari is kind of that guy. I agree with you 100%. Uh, again, Vari is one of those guys. I, I remember being there for Disruptor. He and Slim J. And I may have even said something when they locked up. I think I said something to the table. I was like, oh, my. That's a lockup. Like that's yeah. a professional wrestling lockup right there. And that's – it's those little things like that. And Vari's good at all that and even more. Here's one. Didn't have to think about this one at all. Nope. Who is the one wrestler you don't want to run into in a dark alley? And we had the same answer for this one. Cruel. Yes. I Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Like I don't like there are moments where you're just kinda like if when that switch turns, you're kinda like look, we get it. Like that's all I'm gonna say. Like we get it. We we know how the you know. But at the same time, if he was like and he came at me, yeah, I'm jumping and running. It's fine. I I I'm 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 enough to tell you that I I'm I'm man enough and secure enough to say that. Talk about a wrestler. Has anyone reinvented themselves better or more effectively over the last five years mm -mm. than than Logan Creed turning into cruel? The mask? Holy cow. It, it, anyway, uh, the next one, some of these are pretty easy. Best chops. Not talking about mic skills. We're talking about in the ring. Who's one guy? I don't want any of them chopping them, chopping me. But uh, this guy, he's he's coming at you from a compact package. And somehow, when he lays it in, you can see his opponent. His opponent knows what's coming. Yeah. Ain't, ain't nothing they can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it when Joe Black lays a chop into you. Yeah, everybody, that's a running joke. There's lots of guys out there that claim, you know, and look, um, if we were talking the national scale, that's easy, right? We all scream Gunther, right? right. But down on the Indies, like it's Joe Black. By the way, I, there's a match that was booked at Hell Freezes Over. J.D. Drake and uh, uh, Joe Black, they went to chopping wood. And, I mean, that's, to me, in my brain still stands out. Just pow, pow, like it was gunshots going off. So, yeah, that one didn't take any time for me to go Joe Black. I don't want Joe Jack. I don't want him even remotely touching me with a chop. I need to go back and watch that match from Hell Freezes Over. Cause you knew they got in the ring and you're like, are they just gonna start off with that? And I can't I can't remember how it went. You just knew at some point the chop fest was coming. And I'm normally not a huge I'm a huge fan of that if you do it once per show. Right. And if 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 I had been backstage agenting, I would have told every other match, "Hey, there's one chop fest tonight, and at these it's these two guys." Mm -hmm. By the way, shameless plug, it is on our YouTube channel at the handles to at Tapped Out Pod. It's in the uh, it's it's in the archives. It's back a ways because it happened a few years ago, but that full match or that full card is still there. If you for like whenever I search 
it's the first one that pops up. Like if you're just searching for tapped out pod, I don't know if it's because of the views or whatever, but yeah, def, it's a must watch show. I would say, and I'm not just saying this because we do a podcast together. I think there's a clear, I think that changed things in Georgia. I think that opened some doors to some of the things we're seeing today. I, that's just my opinion. Uh, who is the wrestler most likely to connect with a casual fan? This, again, a young man we're both a huge fan of. He's the everyman. He's the party man, and that is Fluff Man. Yeah. Cody is a uh, – we, we talked about it. He's very much oh, – wow. I just thought of the Freudian thing that I was about to say. Cody – is very much a dusty kind of inner incarnation in our in our era in our area and our era, and so I'm sitting there like, wait, Cody, Cody Rhodes, Cody. Fl-. That's funny, um, but yeah, I, I just think he's super. By the way, if you're not noticing, we're having some fun here. These categories were more fun than than you know serious categories, right. um, and of all of this one, but look, there is some seriousness to this. You can be the best. We all we've said this about Cody Fluffman in the past. He's going out there to connect with casual fans and entertain them. And in my argument, I've always said that's where the tickets are sold, not just getting in the ring and, you know, ding, and then, like, putting on this great physical, spec, you know, little spectator thing in the ring. I think that's the uh, the huge plus that Cody Fluffman's got going for him right now. Because I like I think there's a guy sitting in the front row, no insult. I mean, you're talking to one of that I'm describing. There's some guy going, man, I'd love to chug a beer with him. I bet he's a blast. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. Here's the thing, and every young wrestler needs to do that. I think Cody embraced who he was, and I don't think his mindset is, hey, man, we're going to go out here, we're going to chain wrestle, da, 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 da. Cody's like, this is what I do. This is what gets over with the crowd. Keep it simple. And he can do those other things. And I, but I, I think there's so many of the young wrestlers that are like, oh yeah, we're gonna go out there and chain wrestle. Like, no, just know who you are, stay in your lane, connect with the audience, and yeah. uh, kudos to Fluff Man for doing that. Uh, here's a great one: most likely to be a movie character, uh, and this is someone who has been in some documentaries. Uh, good friend of the show, Sal Renara. The funny reason I think he's a great character is which personality are you going to get? <laughs> right. I think, you know, um, there's so many levels. There's your pal. Um, there's, you know, the there's NWA Sal. There's, you know, crazy heel Sal. Um, maybe it's all of them. Maybe, you know that, do you know that thing you do, the um, the inside your head? Yes. I'd love to see Sal Renaro doing one of those with all of it. So Sal, reach out. That's a that's a good one. That's a I would love to see that. Sal could play all four members of the A team. He could be the brains. He could be kind of like the player. He could certainly be Hal and Mad Murdoch. And I also could see him being the tough guy. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that's a skit in itself for, for sure. But uh, yeah, Sal Renaro <laughs> as a movie character, I'm all in on that. Sal, we're leaving money on the table. We need yeah. we need to make some of these happen. Um, most punchable face. Uh, this is someone I know you've talked a lot about. Someone you begrudgingly respect, and that is Hollywood Hunter James. Yeah, very specifically the Hollywood Hunter James incarnation of it. Yes, um, this was closer than most people think. Alexander Lev has been knocking on this door for a while. <laughs> he really has. Um, he's really chasing this down. But Hunter, I think Hunter might have this category on lockdown for a while uh, just because of the sheer. One of the things that annoys people more than anything is when somebody knows how good they are. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that can be their ultimate downfall. And that is Hunter James's punchable face that's his kind of characteristic is he's really, really good. And if you don't believe him or you don't believe us, ask him, he'll tell you like, that's kind of the Hunter James thing. Uh, and here's the last one. And there's different reasons that I gave my answer for this one. Some kind of like inside stuff. We know most likely to get his or her own podcast. And I said, Bryce cannon. 
Because I know in one of your conversations with him, he said, man, I've got all the stuff. And I I think there's other wrestlers who could who would be great on podcast, yeah. but they don't want to have the technical know-how. Bryce seems like the guy, he's willing to learn all of that, take the lead, and not just kind of be a host or whatever, but be I mean not not just show up, but to take the lead and, and run with it. And I would um hey Bryce, you know, you're rehabbing. You know, you can do the podcast now. I think that'd be great. He's got some downtime. Like the invitation's there. I mean, you know, just saying. Um Yeah, can uh yeah. Cannons cuts or something like that. I don't know. I Cannon don't know. fire. Boom. Bryce, let's make it happen. Patreon. Patreon. Let's let's see it. Uh fans, we always enjoy uh doing this show. And uh, Nick's actually recording more content today that you can only get on Patreon. Patreon.com slash tapped out pod is where not only do you get content you don't get anywhere else, you get early access to shows like this, the national show, other things we put out. There is some stuff that never sees the public light of day. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get that is to be a member of Patreon or to be a member of our YouTube membership. Again, YouTube, you got to hit the subscribe. This is how it works. You you can like any of our videos, but you subscribe, go through all of our videos, go through all hundreds and hundreds of videos, like, 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 <laughs> hit that bell, and then you get all the notifications, and that's a great way to support, uh, a great way to support the show. You can also, we don't talk about this a lot, Pro Wrestling Tees, tapped out pod on Pro Wrestling Tees. Buy buy a shirt, support the show, wear it around, tell all your friends uh, what the, the number one podcast in the region is, in the world, in the world. Uh, I tell everybody I've got the number one podcast in my house. Uh, yeah, so exactly. uh, any other closing thoughts before we get out of here this week? No, man. Look, a big show. Um, look, I, you know, lots of stuff going on over the next week or so. Um, looking forward to, hey, we're going to record – theoretically at this point wednesday we're going to try to record the national show so check us out that's why you want to have your notifications on It'll be the first literally i i am going to say this i don't know if this is true but i'm going to say it because it's a wrestling podcast it doesn't really matter if it's 100 percent accurate <laughs> this is going to be the first episode of the national show Okay, I know of one other one, but that's it. So, yes, but the, in the incarnation that we are in now, this will be the first ever episode that is not me and Myron. Oh, that wow. It's, that it's me and another host. I think I've done one solo before, and then the, when it, in another live incarnation that we did for a while, I had, there was another guy who filled in. But I think literally in the current incarnation, especially on the YouTube format, this will be the first ever show that it's me and another host. Well, I got some big shoes to fill. I did watch a lot of wrestling this weekend <laughs> to get ready. And then I'm trying to keep up with Monday Night Raw tonight. So much respect to those people that watch all the wrestling and talk about it. Um, and that's what we try to do on the indie show. We try to watch as much indie wrestling as we can. Yeah. Imagine that and bring you the best analysis and reporting. But fans, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you for su your support. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And thanks for being a part of Tapped In Indie Wrestling. So for Nick McDaniel, this is Heath Mulliken. We'll see you at the matches.